And I call on the Minister, Marie Goujon. Presiding officer, I want to update the Parliament on the Scottish Government's work to improve animal welfare. This Government is absolutely committed to the highest possible standards of welfare for all of our animals, whether they're domesticated, farmed or wild. Since becoming Minister with responsibility for animal health and welfare, I've met a range of key organisations and individuals and I'm really heartened and impressed by their commitment to this. And on a personal level, this is an area that I care passionately about. That is why we invest £20 million annually in supporting animal health and welfare and employ a highly skilled and qualified workforce led by Scotland's Chief Veterinary Officer. Our work is supported by expert independent advice on farmed animals through the UK Farm Animal Welfare Committee. We recognise the need for similar independent, impartial expert advice on issues relating to domestic and wild animal welfare. That is why we committed in this programme for government to establish a Scottish Animal Welfare Commission. Work is now underway to establish this commission. It's necessary that secondary legislation be developed to describe the precise remit and function of the new body. And while that work is ongoing, we will soon begin a process to recruit members to an interim commission, given the need and importance of this expert advice. We will shortly launch a consultation on a bill to amend our overarching legislation for animals under human control, the Animal Health and Welfare Scotland Act 2006. Our proposals for amendment will include increasing the maximum available penalties for the most serious animal cruelty offences, including offences against police and other service animals, also known as Finns Law, which quite rightly attract public concern. And I know that this is a particular issue that Liam Kerr has raised. This would allow for imprisonment of up to five years rather than the maximum 12 months currently available. We will also create fixed penalty notices for lesser offences in future secondary legislation, freeing local authority inspectors time to focus on the most serious cases. We will consult on permitting inspection bodies to rehome or sell on animals they've taken into their possession to protect their welfare much more quickly and efficiently than they're able to at present. This would allow them to make best use of their resources and avoid animals being held in limbo, waiting for the outcome of court cases, which can often last for many months. I know that this is a very significant problem for local authorities and the Scottish SPCA, discouraging them using their power to take animals into their possession. This was one of the key new features of the 2006 Act, and it is crucial that they're able to use this power effectively. While 80%, 86% of abattoirs already deploy CCTV in some form to record the treatment of live animals, and in excess of 99% of all animals slaughtered in 2016-17 covered by some configuration of CCTV, we wanted to explore the potential to make this mandatory. Presiding officer, I am today publishing the responses to our consultation, which show that 94.9% .9 of respondents support moving to mandatory CCTV recording, and over 90% support the retention of CCTV images for 90 days, with unrestricted access to be given to properly authorised officers. These majorities were supported by abattoir operators, vets and the livestock industry. I can confirm that this year we will bring forward legislation to require that CCTV record all areas of slaughterhouses where live animals are present to aid those enforcing welfare or legislation. In 2017, research that we commissioned indicated how we could alert potential buyers to the serious animal welfare and health problems associated with illegally sourced puppies. Last year, we funded an innovative and hard-hitting public awareness campaign on social media, cinema screens and local radio to reach potential buyers that we know are difficult to reach by other media platforms and channels. We worked closely with all the main dog welfare charities in designing that campaign, which aimed to direct anyone thinking about buying a puppy to a website hosted by the Scottish SPCA for more detailed advice. This campaign attracted wide coverage in the run up to the Christmas holiday period. Further data on the success of that campaign will be made avail available after it has been collected, but we already know that it has been highly effective in increasing the number of visits to the Scottish SPCA website and the calls to their helpline by 130%. Because of the success of the campaign so far, we're already making plans for a follow-up campaign later this year to reinforce the message even further and expect this to have a significant effect on changing the behaviour of buyers that drives the illegal trade. And I really want to take this opportunity to thank Emma Harper MSP for her tireless work in campaigning on this issue. 
In November, we consulted on the registration and licensing of animal sanctuaries and rehoming agencies, and we now intend to introduce legislation on this. This will introduce a modern licensing scheme to protect animals, which will also benefit those caring for them, some of whom may unfortunately take on too many animals to provide the right care. As with other animal-related activities, local authorities will be the licensing authority for premises in their areas. However, we recognise the additional burden that this places on them, and as such, will seek to reduce this by establishing a role for independent inspection and accreditation from nationally recognised bodies. The public consultation on dog, cat and rabbit breeding closed at the end of November, and I can tell Parliament that the responses will be published by the end of this month. As with the regulation of animal sanctuaries, we aim to reduce the burden on the regulators and find a role for independently accredited bodies in inspection and hope to introduce legislation later this year. We will also use this legislation to discourage the breeding of dogs, cats and rabbits with a predisposition for genetic conditions, leading to health complications and poor ongoing welfare. I would also like to mention Jeremy Balfour's proposed Members' Bill on improving the licensing of pet shops. We are, we are committed to giving effect to his proposals in this parliamentary term, and I would like to thank him for his work on this to date, which we will build upon as we develop our detailed proposals. On fox hunting, we consulted on Lord Bonamy's recommendations last year and published the independent consultation analysis report before summer recess. Since then, I've made it a priority to not only make sure I was familiar with all the aspects of this complex issue, but also to speak to all the key stakeholders on all sides of this debate. Consequently, despite the ban on hunting introduced by the Protection of Wild Mammals Scotland Act 2002, it is clear to me that there remains considerable public concern about fox hunting in Scotland and doubts about the operability of the legislation as it currently stands. I believe that Parliament should therefore be given the opportunity to consider the reform of the 2002 Act in the interest of furthering the welfare of wild animals. I plan to bring forward a bill to deal with this and other wildlife and welfare issues during the course of the current Parliament. In addition to progressing the majority of Lord Bonamy's recommendations, the bill will, as is already the case in England and Wales, seek to limit the number of dogs that can be deployed against wild mammals to two. It is important that we do not undermine the need for legitimate pest control, particularly in upland areas, so I intend to explore the possibility of a new licensing scheme which could enable the use of more than two dogs where it is deemed necessary. The bill will also contain provision to discourage the establishment in Scotland of the practice known as trail hunting, as this poses significant risks for wild mammals. The issue here is that even with the best of intentions, there appears to be too high a risk that hounds following a trail will be diverted on the scent of a live fox and will pursue and possibly kill that animal. We will, of course, consult on the draft bill in due course. I'm aware that there are many across this chamber who take a keen interest in this and who have campaigned strongly on this and have raised it a number of times in this chamber. Colin Smith, Christine Graham, and of course, Alison Johnson, who I know is working on a member's bill in relation to fox hunting. We stand ready to cooperate and work constructively on this important issue. In the meantime, for those recommendations from the Bonamy Review, which do not require primary legislation, members will wish to be aware that we intend to press forward with the Code of Practice on Hunting and the Hunt Monitoring Arrangements that were proposed by Lord Bonamy and introduce these measures as soon as we can. We have already agreed a code of practice with stakeholders. It is important that we are able to assure the public that we are doing everything we can to ensure highest standards of animal welfare and adherence to the law. Presiding officer, there is quite rightly always strong cross-party interest and public concern about animal welfare matters. I want to reassure this chamber that I take this aspect of my portfolio interests seriously. There are issues that I care deeply about and I am determined that we continue to not only maintain, but improve animal welfare standards. I've set out this government's commitment to a range of measures, including to update existing legislation and to introduce new legislation where it is needed. This will ensure we provide strong foundations and clear and serious powers and responsibilities to all who breed, keep and care for animals. I look forward to engaging with members and parties across the chamber and listening to different perspectives to help shame and frame legislative proposals that command confidence and achieve consensus where it can be found. We have a strong track record in Scotland of caring for animals that we keep in all circumstances and for our wild fauna too. 
but where there is more to do to challenge and change attitudes and behaviour, we must do so. Most people respect and value animals in their homes, in their businesses and in the wild. I want to do all I can with your support to ensure that the expectations on people are clear and where necessary enforceable. My aim is for everyone to uphold the highest possible standards of welfare for all animals. Thank you. We move now to questions. I would encourage those who wish to ask a question and who haven't already done so to press their request to speak buttons. And I call Maurice Gordon. I thank the Minister for early sight of the statement. The Scottish Conservatives are committed to the highest standards of animal welfare and I welcome the substantive points made in the statement. We are committed to protecting animals and are clear that those who abuse and inflict cruelty on animals should be punished in accordance with the law. As the Minister has recognised in her statement, Scottish Conservative MSPs have worked tirelessly to promote animal welfare, such as the introduction of Finn's Law, increasing sentences for the worst forms of animal cruelty to five years, improving licensing of pet shops and the compulsory use of CCTV in abattoirs. We are pleased that the Scottish Government have agreed to implement these Scottish Conservative proposals and will work with the Government to ensure that they are delivered. We will continue to campaign in areas we wish the Scottish Government to go further on, such as an effective ban on the use of electric shock collars for dogs. But will the Minister commit to producing an implementation plan for the proposals outlined in her statement by Easter recess so that our animals receive the protection they deserve as soon as possible? Minister. I thank Maurice Golden for his comments. I'd obviously be keen to work with him as well as work with other parties across this chamber because I do see these issues as about animal welfare. I don't see them as being about party, politi about party politics. And so I'm keen to work with you and uh, with the member as well as other members across this chamber in achieving that. Now, obviously, there are a number of issues that I outlined today, uh, which a lot of that we would be hoping to implement this year. I don't know if there are specific pro proposals within that that the member would like to see in any sort of implementation pl plan. Obviously, in terms of legislation and our introduction of legislation, a lot of that is heavily dependent on what on the outcome of Brexit. As many people within this chamber will know, particularly if they sit on the environment and the rural committees, those two areas in particular are very heavily affected by Brexit legislation. So, of course, we have to deal with that. That's why I can't give definitive definitive timescales on a lot of this, but a lot of it I hope we would I hope to uh, introduce this year. But I would be more than happy to arrange a meeting with the member where we could go discuss this in more detail. Colin Smith to be followed by Mark Ruskell. Thank you, President Officer, and thank you to Mary Goujon for advance sight of her statement. Can I also refer members to the voluntary part of my register of interest as a member of the League Against Cruel Sports? President officer, there is much within Mary Goujon's statement which Labour warmly welcomes from pressing ahead with tougher sentencing for animal cruelty offences to proper regulation of pet shops, animal sanctuaries and rehoming agencies. On the specific issue, however, of fox hunting, it's clear there are loopholes in the existing legislation and hunts have gone out of their way to ride roughshod over the law, both in spirit and in letter. The measures to progress that the Lord Bonamy recommendations to prevent trail hunting being established and to limit the number of dogs to two that can be deployed against wild animals are therefore a welcome step forward. But, President Officer, you cannot license cruelty. So I am concerned that any proposal to introduce a licensing scheme that would enable more than two dogs to be used in hunting and the lack of proposals around the use of mounted hunts. Does the Minister agree that, that three years after the Bonamy review was announced, it is time for the Government to get on with consigning the barbaric practice of fox hunting to the history books once and for all by bringing forward legislation that ensures that 2018 will be the last Boxing Day hunt we ever see? Minister. I thank you and I, I thank the member for his question. As, as I just outlined in the previous question, in terms of timescales, I realise how important an issue this is. That's why I specifically took the time to carefully consider this to make sure that we get the proposals right when they are introduced. And I would aim to do that, uh, of course, with any of these pieces of legislation. They are all vitally important and I want us to be able to do that as soon as is, is practically possible. But given that where we are with Brexit, I can't give a definitive timescale on that yet. But this 
is a priority for me and it is something uh, I want to see done. The member mentioned mounted hunts in, in particular. I, we are, this isn't an issue about whether someone taking part in hunting activity is on a horse or not because we're concerned with the welfare of the hunted species. And in any event, a ban on the use of horses during hunts is likely to raise issues with European Convention on Human Rights. I, I am aware that the, the member also raised concerns about potential loopholes and uh, licensing is inferring that licensing could potentially be a loophole in that. And I want to categorically assure everyone in the, this chamber today that the reason that we have come forward with the proposals as they are at the moment is that we don't, we, we are specifically trying to tackle any potential loopholes that are perceived to be in the legislation at the moment. And when it comes to the introduction of the two dog limit, we've seen how that has been implemented in England and Wales. We've seen what's happened as a result of that with the growth of trail hunting too. And that's why we are proposing the actions that I, ha, that I mentioned in my statement today. So we want to close any potential loopholes that are there. The licensing is something that will potentially be considered where there is a legitimate uh, pest control again this is at the very early stages we don't know what that scheme might look like but I know that there are specific issues particularly in the uplands of Scotland but again I want to emphasize this is about closing loopholes not about creating any new ones. Mark Ruskell to be followed by Mike Grumbles. Thank you uh, can I declare an interest as an honorary member of the British Veterinary Association um, th there is much to welcome in this statement much to welcome and I think it shows the government has learned from the debacle over tail docking um, it's clear the government's listened to the Greens and other members in this parliament in bringing forward now primary legislation. But there are gaps in this statement, in particular uh, the licensing of performance animals, the poor uh, conditions we see in both the horse racing and greyhound racing industries, the need to update farm animal welfare codes, and also the need for an urgent new definition of animal sentience. Um, is this, uh, are these issues which the government is open uh, to dealing with as part of what could be a landmark piece of primary legislation if we get it right? Minister. Uh, absolutely. I would give that assurance to, to Mark Ruskell. I mean, I, given the scale of some of the issues that I've had to look at since assuming this portfolio, I hope he can appreciate and understand, as other members in this uh, chamber, I, I hope would too, that there have been an incredible number of issues to try and tackle and to deal with. I want to take the time to make sure that I do that as well as I possibly can and to properly inform myself of all these issues because I think that that is vitally important too. And I've said a number of times in this chamber, I mean, I'm more than happy to work with anyone in this chamber on any of the proposals we bring forward because again this isn't about party politics it's about doing the right thing and about improving animal welfare so whatever those issues come up i'm more than happy to discuss that with mr ruskell and with any other member across this chamber mike rumbles to be followed by rona mckay the liberal democrats specifically want to see a ban on, thir on the third party sale of dogs and a ban on the sale of dogs under eight weeks of age will these measures be included in the forthcoming legislation. Minister. Oh, I thank Mark, uh, sorry, Mike Rumbles for that question. Now, I recently had actually held a meeting with vet Mark Abraham, who has been leading the campaign for banning third party sales of puppies, which is also known as Lucy's Law. And I'm aware that these proposals are currently being considered elsewhere in the UK. And it is an issue that I, I'm looking at here too. I, but I would want to emphasize to the chamber, my, offici my officials re recently contacted all local authorities in Scotland to really consider how big an issue this is for us here, uh, to see how many licenses had been issued for sale of animals of and we had two-thirds of local authorities in uh, Scotland respond none had reported having issued licenses I don't believe this is as big an issue for us as what it may be across the, the rest of the UK but I don't want Mr Rumbles or anybody else across this chamber to think that I am not actively considering it as an issue and something that we, should, we could take action on but so I would want to uh, assure him that this is something that we're actively considering and could potentially look at. Rona Mackay to be followed by Finlay Kirsten. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I really welcome the Minister's announcement to bringing forward legislation on fox hunting, and I acknowledge the Minister's point that any action on fox hunting should not undermine legitimate pest control. Can the Minister expand a bit further on this? Minister. Uh, thank you. This is just a point that I would want to emphasise again, is that as in, I would hark back to my previous response to, uh, to Colin Smith, that this isn't about the creation of a loophole, but rather the possibility of a regulation that looks at a potential exe exemption. 
So in tandem with the new code of practice and the hunt monitoring arrangements, we aim to ensure compliance and encourage transparency. Um, and it's important to note that licensing may prove to be an important protection to ensure legitimate pest control isn't inadvertently caught by legal restrictions. And again, we recognise that there are this is important for farmers, particularly in the upland areas of Scotland. Uh, this is something that we will potentially look at and consider because there are particular set of, uh, of circumstances there. But again, licensing isn't about creating a loophole. This is about tightening up the legislation that we have uh, in Scotland and making sure that there aren't any loopholes there. Finlay Carson to be followed by Gail Ross. I welcome the Minister's announcement to amend the current legislation, particularly to increase the maximum sentences available uh, and permitting inspection bodies to rehome and sell uh, on animals. Can the Minister give us assurance that the establishment of a commission, whilst I uh, recognise the need to get it right, will not in any way prolong the introduction of much needed legislation, and, and particularly in the case of livestock worrying, will she look as a matter of urgency at how current uh, legislative powers can be maximised to reduce the alarming rate in sheep worrying? Minister. I thank Finlay Carson for that question because livestock worrying, of course, is an issue that I know is being looked at uh, carefully by Emma Harper, who is looking at introducing a, a member's bill in relation to that because it is such a, a vitally important issue. And I would also say that it's something that the government is looking to launch a, a survey on uh, over the coming months as well. Um, it is a vitally important issue and this wouldn't the work any work that we do on that or any work that could be taken forward wouldn't be affected by the, the, the establishment of the Animal Welfare Commission. I completely understand the need and the urgency for it and to be honest we would be keen, uh, the Scottish Government would be keen to have that established as soon as is feasibly possible. That's why we want to look at setting up an interim commission because while we wait on the changes to the secondary legislation being made because I do think it is vitally, vitally important that we have that independent expert advice on hand when it comes to when it comes to issues that relate to, to domestic and wild animals i would also want to emphasize as well that we do rely uh, and we do seek advice from the farm animal welfare uh, committee that operates across the uk so we don't want to duplicate the advice that they can offer uh, and we would look to supplement that with what we with whatever we create in scotland but there is a need for that advice and that, that expert uh, in independent advice and we are keen to establish that as soon as it's possible Gail Ross to be followed by Claudia Bibish. Thank you, President Officer, and I thank the Minister for this very welcome statement. I note from the CCTV and Abattoirs report that the responses from veterinary and animal welfare groups see this as additional to vets being on site. But some abattoirs find this regulation quite restrictive, and this is due to get worse after Brexit, given that so many vets are EU nationals. Is there a possibility for the CCTV to be used to allow vets to remotely monitor proceedings instead of having to be physically present to enable more premises to stay open and therefore reduce the distances the animals have to travel? Yes. Ross for that question because it does highlight a very particular problem that we could well face if there is a problem uh, with uh, EU citizens and their rights to live and work in Scotland. Uh, uh, in light of Brexit. Particularly, uh, that, that issue is particularly acute when it comes to the vets who work in our abattoirs because 98% of them are EU citizens. So this is potentially a huge problem that we could face. Uh, the Scottish Government are obviously taking as much action as we can. We welcome EU citizens uh, to live and work here. In relation to the CCTV and the impact that that would have, I suppose that we wouldn't want to see that as a uh, as this the fact that we, we want to take that to be seen as we don't need vets in abattoirs or to replace that because we would want to see this in terms of improving animal welfare and supplementing uh, having vets already on site. Um, and we would see it as a complement to current physical monitoring and controls, but it's something that we will keep under review. Claudia Beamish to be followed by Stuart McMillan. Thank you, Presiding Officer. Um, while the statement is welcome, can the Minister tell the Chamber what the Scottish Government intends to do about consulting on banning snaring and hair culls and banning trophy hunting, as well as already raised shock collars? And uh, following on from the previous question, how will the Scottish Government ensure that there are more abattoir facilities and assist CCTV installation in micro abattoirs? Minister. I think there were quite a few questions within that one question. So if I, 
If I do miss any of them, I hope Claudia Beamish, I'd be happy to write, with, to write to Claudia Beamish with more information or to arrange a meeting with her to discuss a lot of these issues in more detail. In relation to mountain hares, that is subject to the Greismoor Management Review, which is due to report in the spring. So we will see the outcome of that over the coming uh, few months. In relation to snaring, that isn't something I've actively looked at as part of this statement. Obviously, we've had a lot of issues to look at as part of this portfolio that I wanted to update the Chamber on today. So that isn't something that I have uh, considered in the portfolio uh, so far. However, uh, there is a review into snaring every five years. That's required by Section 11F of the Wild, uh, Wildlife and Countryside Act. 1981. Uh, Scottish Natural Heritage Review, the most recent one, confirmed that the legislative changes made to snaring in 2011 have reduced the number of reported incidents of snaring related offences and the administration procedure seems to be working satis satisfactorily. So I, I, again, if there are more issues, I'd be more than happy to engage with the member on those. Stuart McMillan to be followed by Peter Chapman. Thank you, President officer. President officer, I welcome the commitment to consult on the Animal Health and Welfare of Scotland Act 2006. However, will the Minister consider uh, proposals to open up the possibility of retrospectively considering new evidence irrespective of the length of time that has lapsed since the crime was committed, as was asked for in the Agreement Telegraph for Justice for Pets petition submitted in 2015? Minister. Thanks, Stuart McMillan, for that question. And of course, that is something that I would be happy to consider and it's something that I'd be willing to discuss with my officials and keep Mr McMillan informed. Peter Chapman to be followed by Ruth McGuire. Presiding officer, I remind members of my register of interest as a, as a farmer. I welcome the introduction of mandatory CCTV coverage in abattoirs. And now many slaughterhouses, slaughterhouses have, have already some CT, CCTV coverage already, but is it the Minister's expectation that this will need to be more extensive and cover more areas within the abattoir in future? And given that we on these benches have supported mobile abattoirs for the islands, can the Minister advise if the, if the government will provide any financial support for the installation of CCTV in micro and mobile abattoirs? Minister. I, th I would like to thank Peter Chapman for that question. As I mentioned in my statement, I mean, he's already right. There was a voluntary, we were encouraging abattoirs voluntarily to install CCTV. 86% of abattoirs currently have that installed. And as I also said in the statement, 99% of animals in 2016-17 were covered by some sort of CCTV. So it shows that we are almost there. When it comes to any sort of support that would be available, that's, that's something that we're, we are investigating at the moment, but it would be completely for all abattoirs to, to have CCTV coverage. But in relation to, to mobile abattoirs as well, that's an, a, an issue which has been raised a number of times in this chamber when we've discussed live animal exportation, for example, and the, the opportunities that could potentially exist there. Uh, there could well be opportunities there, and I do think that's something that, that could be explored. Ruth McGuire to be followed by Polly McNeill. Presiding officer, thank uh, Minister for all her work on this and the statement. Can I particularly welcome the increased sentencing options available um, for those who abuse animals? The Minister may have seen footage from an infamous, infamous Boxing Day hunt of a huntsman abusing his own horse. Would she agree with me that the authorities should be vigilant and that anyone who takes pleasure or sport from the torture of one animal is for the watching and that this abusive behaviour might not be confined to one species? Minister. The Scottish Government is grateful for the animal welfare work carried out by local authority and Scottish SPCA inspectors under the Animal Health and Welfare Scotland Act 2006 and of course Police Scotland too. And I, I would emphasise that all forms of animal abuse are wrong and of course I would encourage anyone that witnesses any sort of torture or animal abuse to report that to the relevant, relevant authorities. Polly McNeill to be followed by Christine Graham. I've been quite convinced that we should have a ban on electric shock collars for dog and other animals and I welcome the Minister's statement in that regard. But I wonder if I could press her further and what level of priority does the Minister intend to give this in the forthcoming Parliament? I thought that the, the answer she gave to Morris Golden was, was a little bit vague and I'd like to press her a bit further on what level of priority she'll give it. Minister. 
In relation to that, in, in relation to the timing of some of the pieces that I've, uh, that I've I mentioned in my statement today, I mean, as I mentioned in previous answers, Brexit is the, is the overhanging issue here, which does have a huge, an absolutely huge impact on this portfolio. So that will, of course, affect any of the, and affect the timing of pieces of legislation that we plan to bring forward. But this is, this is my job. Animal health and welfare is my portfolio. As I said in my statement too, it's something that I care deeply and I care passionately about. So I would of course want to see the, all the measures that I've talked about today implemented uh, as soon as possible. But a lot of that depends on what happens over the next few months and how big an impact we're going to see in Scotland. Christine Graham to be followed by Liam Kerr. Thank, thank you, Presiding Officer. There's much to welcome in this statement, and I know the Minister means what she says about animal welfare. However, on fox hunting and the reference to pest control and the use of more than two dogs, can the Minister advise the Chamber if she considers the Buclue hunt to be one of the vestiges of a privileged class pursuing a cruel sport, or an example of a voluntary pest control organisation which may apply for a pest control licence? Minister. I would just simply reiterate what I've talked about earlier in the chamber as well. Again, this isn't about creating any potential loopholes. And again, I'm, working, I'm willing to work with anybody across this chamber to make sure that when these proposals come forward, that we get them right and we have a, a law in Scotland that is, that is strong, which is, and it tightens up what we already have. I mean, we had a number of recommendations from the Bonnemere Review, uh, the vast majority of which we intend to implement, which would see the strengthening and uh, tightening of the laws that we have at the moment. As I said in a previous question, we've seen uh, what the, what's happened in England and Wales and the measures that they've introduced there. That is why we plan to go further than, what, than the legislation that currently exists across the UK at the moment. Again, this isn't about creating loopholes. Liam Kerr and Alison Johnson, if you still want to ask a question. Liam Kerr. Thank you, Presiding Officer. I'm delighted to hear the Minister confirm that Finn's law is progressing. Uh, but can she give me any firm indications of timescales, as it's absolutely vital this gets on the statute book without delay? Minister. I thank the member for that question, and I know that this is an issue that he has campaigned on and one that is very important to him, uh, and is, of course, important to the government too. Now, uh, I'm in a position to say that in relation to Finn's law and the amendments that we would be making to the Animal Health and uh, Welfare Act of 2006, we will be launching a consultation over the coming weeks, and I imagine that that consultation will have been published by the end of this month, and we will then aim to progress that from there. But again, in terms of definitive timescales, that's something that I can't disclose at this current moment in time. And Alison Johnson. Thank you. I welcome the Minister's intent to improve the Protection of Wild Mammals Act and I look forward to working with her to deliver a real ban on fox hunting in Scotland. Will the Minister confirm that she will consider the removal of the multiple exceptions to the offence which provide opportunities for exploitation for those who continually and deliberately offend as noted by uh, in the Bonamy Review and while I appreciate the comments the Minister has made about the Grouse Management Review, um, does the Minister agree that this legislation could provide much needed protection for Scotland's hares, both mountain and brown? Thank you. Minister. I think we really have to wait and see what comes out of the Grousemere Management uh, Review before I'd, I could make any further comment on that. But in terms of looking at the Bonamy recommendations, absolutely, we would be committed to, as I say, um, implementing the vast majority of the recommendations that were proposed uh, by Lord Bonamy. I know that Alison Johnson has done a lot of work in the preparation of her members bill on fox hunting and I fully intend to work closely with her and others across this chamber. Again if we're going to do this piece of legislation I want us to do it right and put proposals in place that will strengthen and improve animal welfare legislation in Scotland. Thank you very much to members and the Minister. That concludes our statement on improving animal welfare. We're going to move on to the next item of business on the life sciences in a few moments. We'll just give members and the Minister a chance to change seats. <laughs>